Hello everyone and welcome to your next lesson on electricity. And so today we're going to be focusing on circuits and just kind of the basics of circuits. What are they? What are the parts of them? What, are, what do some simple circuits look like? So the first thing that I wanted to spend some time talking about are just what are really common items that you're going to see on a circuit. And so there's really four things that you're frequently going to see on a circuit. One is going to be an energy source, so a battery or connection to the power grid. Some, again, energy source, a battery being really common. You could also have a generator, something that's going to actually produce electricity to go into that circuit. And so, of course, on our <clears throat> image here on our right, our energy source is going to be right here. All right, so here's where we got our energy source. Okay, the next one we're going to have is our load. So our load is a device that uses energy. Really commonly, you'll see a load as a light bulb. And so that's what we're going to have in our image on the right as well. In which so on the right, we have our two light bulbs over here. And that's going to be our load. There's something that are, you know, using the electricity. It's kind of like the electricity has to lift it. It's not actually lifting anything, but it's the idea that that energy is being used. Just like in order for you to lift something, if you're carrying a load, you have to use energy for it. The next is going to be a wire. So a wire connects other parts of the circuit, right? <clears throat> and so we can see both of those on our uh, image on the right as well, in which, so now on the right, there's multiple parts, but let's just go ahead and say, oh, that doesn't show up very well for you guys. Let me get you a better color so you guys can see. Let's go here, we got our wire right there, right? And of course that goes throughout connecting all of those. And the last thing uh, that you'll frequently have on some circuits, especially the ones like in your home and anything that you ultimately want to be able to stop um, the circuit without actually disconnecting the power source, you're gonna have some form of switch. And that's again, something that opens or closes a circuit. Obviously, a great example is going to be a light switch in your home or really any sort of power button on a device that you can turn on or off. That's effectively acting like a switch in the circuit. <clears throat> you don't want to have to pull the power source like the battery out of an object when you're done using it. You want to just be able to turn it off and turn it on when you're ready and have to constantly pull a battery in and out or disconnect those types of things. And so our light switch, <clears throat> we're going to see right here. So that's going to be our switch. So those are our basic parts of the circuit. Most circuits are gonna have all of these things. Really the only one on here that a circuit really isn't gonna have is sometimes they won't have a switch. Um, that's actually fairly uncommon unless it's just in a very closed type of idea. You almost always are gonna have to have some form of load because if you just have a wire connected from one end of the battery to another, for example, that's really harmful to the battery actually and can cause fires and things like that. So it's not a very safe circuit because there's not enough resistance and that energy, that's why batteries are really hot if you do that. Okay, let's move on to our next piece. So the next is frequently you'll see simplified drawings of circuits and that's what I'm showing on here. Not a full circuit, but simply the symbols that will be used. Now we're not going to use all of these, for example, like power pack and things like that. We're not going to really use for our purposes. Uh, ones that we're probably going to use the most are all on the left hand side of this image. Uh, and then the other one on the right hand that we'll definitely use is going to be the light bulb. Okay, so we'll have that. So really, it's going to be everything on this right hand side plus the light bulb. You may occasionally see some of them that are on the, this right side minus the light bulb, but we're not going to focus on them too much. Uh, so of course we'll see wire, just a simple line, a switch open or closed, almost like a door from a bird's eye view is wanted to think about it, a resistor you'll see a lot, and then a lot of the times you could draw a resistor just like you would a light bulb depending on that detail, because a light bulb effectively is a resistor, it just is a resistor that glows. Uh, and then there's the battery which we'll also have we probably won't make too much of a distinction between single cell and just a regular battery. Um, <clears throat> mostly just we'll be using choosing of a battery and just signifying that that's our power source. All right. 
So now that we have that basic understanding of a circuit and some of the pieces that go into it, let's talk about how they can actually be arranged. And so that's going to be a series and a parallel circuit. Those are going to be the two types of circuits that we're going to focus on here today. So the first one is a series circuit. So a series circuit is a circuit in which resistors are arranged in sequence so the current has only one path to take. The current is the same through each resistor. Okay, so you can see an example of a series circuit on the right in which we have our, in this case, battery. <clears throat> and then we have our current flowing counterclockwise based off these arrows. All right, and then we have these different resistors here within the circuit. <coughs> um, now, and we, you know, we have those resistors labeled, and those could be light bulbs. They could just be things in the circuit as a resistor. They're probably light bulbs. I don't know what the point of a circuit that would have you know, just random resistors in there, or it could be something that it's powering. Uh, regardless, what you can see is that all of our resistors are along the same line. They're all on the same wire. There isn't another path for them, the electricity, the current to flow on. It only has one specific direction that it can flow on. There's no way for it to, you know, turn left, turn right. It just has to stay the course on that specific wire. So this is where that next piece comes into play. And that's if a resistor is a light bulb and it burns out, then the entire circuit stops. And, or if the resistor breaks of something of that nature. So what that so looks like, and I'll move myself out of the way here. <clears throat> what this looks like is you can see in this animated uh, uh, image on the right, in which if, in this case, we're just removing the light bulb. But in this case, if we remove a light bulb, that actually serves the same way as if a light bulb goes out because electricity can't actually flow through a burnt out light bulb anymore. That's why it's not being powered on. And so that's going to break the circuit. That's why a lot of homes aren't... Uh, wired in a series path because then if let's say you know you have three lights in a room and one goes out and then the rest go out that's going to cause a problem and so a lot of them aren't going to be arranged in a series circuit they could be arranged in something like our next circuit that we're going to look at and that's going to be a parallel circuit so a parallel circuit has two or more paths for the current to flow through all right and so you can see that in the upper right image in which we have multiple paths for our current to flow through. We can, it can go here and then turn or it could continue going straight and then turn. It has multiple directions for it to go. What this also means is because there's all of these paths, the sum of the currents on each path equals the total current of the system. It means current is uniform across all of them. The reason partly, well, we'll explore reasons as to why this is. It kind of deals with the path of least resistance, and then as things change, as that current is going, but the sum of the currents on each path is going to equal the total current of the system. So, for example, more current can more readily flow through a resistance that's lower, um, but it's not necessarily going to mean all of it's going to go that way. Okay. Now, the other thing that's going to happen is so, kind of connecting to that idea of our series circuit. Um, if we have a parallel circuit, so we have a similar image in the bottom right, if we pull out that middle light bulb, the other ones stay on. Because what ends up happening is so this one ends up being cut, the current can't flow through here anymore, but they can still go in these paths because there's still a com continuous path for it to travel on. So it's still able to go through uh, and function and power those light bulbs along that circuit. And that is your lesson on the basics of how circuits are set up and their general components. If you have questions, absolutely let me know. Have a good one.